Hey everybody, my name is Carl Slaap, watchmaker from the Netherlands, and today the Seiko 5. Some fun facts, probably you didn't know before, and I'll show you the inside, and is it all that cracked up to be? Is it that special, just a Seiko 5? Cheers everybody. Mm. Here in the workshop we do very high-end watches, but we're not snobs. Seiko 5 comes along quite regularly. All watches with emotional value uh, because it's a low entry model and uh, of deceased relatives, um, first paycheck, stuff like that. So we restore even the Seiko 5s quite regularly here. Uh, because I was amazed, uh, the first one is from 1963. Um, very early on, um, Seiko 5 is an in itself brand, super brand of Seiko, and the 5 stands for 5 characteristics, but the list changed over the years, but most commonly is date day, automatic winding, um, uh, mechanical watch, uh, a degree of waterproof, uh, central second hand and the crown in the four position although that last one is on and off the list of the five characteristics just a few fun facts uh, about the Seiko's because um, there is a way to date them and to see if the movement is the original one inside the Seiko because it's made for such a long time uh, um, some movements are interchangeable so I will show you the genius of Seiko 5 well I've got one here and I would like to show you there through my microscope there we are and that is where I would like to show you some fun facts. First, here the Hattori code. Four numbers and digits and then a dash and then four. Every single Psycho, Pulsar, Loris, whatever you think of it, has got the Hattori code. First four numbers are a code for which caliber is used. The timepiece itself. So without opening, you can see what timepiece should be in there. In this case, the 7S26, the real workhorse of Seiko. The other four digits are the case. So this timepiece can be in several different cases. If you want to um, uh, order some parts, all you need is the Hattori code, this one, always there. Another fun fact, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, is here the serial number. Uh, you can date your watch by it. Not, not common knowledge, I think. The first number stands for the decade. So this can be... 1978, 88, 98, 2008. That is the first one. So you have to know roughly in which decade your watch is produced. And then here, the one. That means January. But so, 1 to 9, then we in September. For October, there is an O. The second digit can never be a zero, but can be an O for October, N November, D December. Never a zero, but the zero month is nothing. So you can date your watch and, uh, via this code, and that is commonly used, uh, well, here in the Netherlands, for a um, birth year and month Seiko. Hope you like that fun fact. Then the inside. That is genius. Um, 
Seiko has got their own philosophy. And that is, we um, don't do too much on finishing, making it beautiful. But that doesn't mean it is cutting corners, because they don't pretend to be anything but an affordable watch. So I really do appreciate that. Um, we still have to uh, restore this one, but I thought it was nice to show you. Uh, here, just like it said on the tin, 7S26C. And I would like you to show you the genius of Psycho, because it really is. If I remove the rotor, the common problem in automatic winding is that it is wound just one way. So here is the automatic winding, the magic lever of Seiko. And again, we still have to restore it, it looks a bit of a mess. The rotor goes round and round. There with the teeth. And here, I use a bit of pack wood so I don't make any scratches. It is wound and then the beauty the genius it is the magic lever so it's pulling and pushing look at that no matter one side is pulling the other side is pushing do you see that so if i goes like this anti-clockwise or like this this wheel is always going one way. It is absolute genius. Uh, just for fun, this is a Swiss solution. Same, this is the rotation point for the rotor. And if you just see these two wheels, they've got two levers in it as a bit of a clutch. But just those wheels are so intricate, the clutch can stick, uh, it's a sandwich uh, wheel, both of them. Um, I think just for this automatic winding, 18, maybe 20 different parts. Just one wheel is so many parts. And now Seiko. It is genius in itself. Here, a wheel with an accenter. And that's why there's a wig wag action. It is very close to the IWC solution uh, from Mr. Peloton in the early 50s. But then it was both pulling, <laughs> a bit like this. And now Seiko has made it more uh, simple. And that is genius. Uh, it's reliable. It works. It is perfect. And just the few parts, hardly anything can break. It will run for donkey's years. And that is the beauty of uh, Seiko. It is simple, elegant, no beautiful finish, but it is affordable that way. And they don't, and that's what I love, cut corners in technical solutions. So only in finishing, but it runs perfectly. And what I love about Seiko is it is affordable it does what it says on the tin and it is for most youth or people who don't have too much money uh, we all have been in that place um, affordable watches and a real entry into mechanical watchmaking and 
collecting mechanical watches and know that it exists and the love for mechanical watches. So Seiko 5, it's been around for so many years and we see Patek, Vacheron, um, name it whatever, uh, Breguet <laughs> over here. But for me is a Seiko is the best bang for your buck because it is affordable, it runs and it's just a nice watch and who cares that the finishing is well less than uh, Swiss models. Well most Swiss models you think hmm. So uh, yeah enjoy them. Uh, don't spend too much money and you are having a beautiful a lovely um, mechanical watch that can be restored for generations simple as that really do hope you enjoyed the inside of this Seiko 5 if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and uh, hope to see you soon see ya bye bye